These children are trying to forget the trauma of fleeing their homes. For the past five months, home has been a refugee camp at Dili Airport. <laughs> this is Jose, a refugee who's volunteered to help keep the children busy. Sometimes we, we feel very sad because we do not know in an, uncer an uncertain time, we do not, do, not, do not know when we can go home. There's something that sometimes makes us feel a bit sad about it. But with this kind of activity, we can minimize the fear and the stress or <laughs> depression about war. <laughs> There are still almost 60 camps for 150,000 internally displaced people in East Timor. Many have had their homes looted and burned. They fled here with nothing. They're going nowhere and they're getting by as best they can. <laughs> John Bosco fled to the airport with his family back in April at the first sign of trouble. He's been here ever since. John offers to show me what life is like for the refugees here. The refugees here are mostly Easterners and have been threatened by mobs from the West. John says that when he and some friends tried to go home, they were attacked and one of them was stabbed. But worse than the fear is the feeling that the refugees are pawns in a political game. Baik itu orang-orang yang sekarang saudara-saudara kita yang sekarang main brutal bakar rumah, curi orang punya barang ini, mereka itu sendiri juga tahu bahwa mereka itu dimanfaatkan. Dan kita juga yang pengungsi ini juga kita dimanfaatkan juga kita sebagai korban. Kita ini rakyat kecil ini sudah terlalu korban. Kita tidak tahu ya. Kalau memang pemerintahan orang-orang berpolitik ini kalau memang mau bunuh rakyat silakan aja dikumpulkan satu lapangan dibunuh aja sekalian mati daripada kita disensarakan begini. All of these uh, the maps that we identify different uh, camps in The government minister responsible for managing the camps is Arsenio Bano. He says the refugees won't go home until East Timor's leaders show some unity. We need to have a common understanding or effort by everyone in this country that we are sending one message of, uh, of how to uh, be able to calm down the situation because uh, it is not only a sectarian problem. It is uh, most likely politically, political motivated uh, uh, problems, uh, which uh, uh, it makes it so difficult to handle uh, from the humanitarian aspect. Outside of Dili, we pass thousands more displaced people. I've joined the United Nations World Food Program on a field trip to assess humanitarian needs in the east of the country. It's not only the refugees who are suffering here. Life for most East Timorese is a struggle at the best of times, 
and aid agencies were warning of widespread malnutrition even before the current crisis. WFP, uh, we've done some survey and we estimate that about 350,000 people in sort of on average in any given year are not um, have do not have access to enough food to meet their minimum kilocalorie requirements that means they don't have enough food they don't uh, have enough money to buy enough food or the household doesn't produce enough food this family is like many others in East Timor they have no land to farm so they rarely eat vegetables, beans or eggs. The father ekes out a living selling fish, but the family only gets to eat fish once or twice a month. The blonding of the children's hair indicates significant protein deficiency, and all of them are stunted. That child is, is, is seven year old. She's probably uh, has the, the height of a five-year-old. They don't get enough uh, food, they don't get the right kind of food for them to grow at a normal level. According to the World Food Programme, almost 10% of East Timorese children die before their first birthday. Of those who survive, close to half are underweight or stunted, and 12% are severely malnourished. Emergency coordinator Rasmus Egendal says that there are long-term consequences for the country if malnutrition is not eradicated. Their growth is stunted, their mental development is, uh, is, is not as it's supposed to be, so many kids die. Uh, when they go to school, they don't have the same uh, capacity to develop. So for, for, for a, a nation like this that is struggling with the, uh, you know, to, 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 to come back after this bumpy period it's been through, that's a serious uh, problem. This is the rice? The rice. Is that uh, they already ate once today? Yeah. Lunch and dinner. Also for dinner? And dinner. What, is, what do they for eat? For six people. What do they eat uh, with this? No more, only this. Only rice? Only rice. Okay. And w what is in this pot? It's, it's empty. <laughs> okay. So do they eat any vegetables with no, this? No, no, only this. Only this. Even those with land to farm are doing it tough. Like farmers all around here, this family is feeling the effects of two years of bad harvests. This young mother is pregnant with her second child. Egendal wants her to visit the local clinic, where she can pick up dietary supplements and doctors can monitor the baby's growth. She doesn't go unless she has a problem. Okay, so that doesn't work very well in terms of uh, growth. Yeah, so she doesn't really understand how to uh, to go. Okay. Whether she understands or not, it costs money and time to reach the clinic. And her main concern is finding enough to eat each day. I mean, we can't do anything about the poor agriculture, and, and we don't want to provide free food, but we can do a yeah. supplementary, supplementary program, program so that the, the mothers mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. they, they go to the clinics yeah. and you bring you know some support to the, the children okay. and the, mm -hmm. the pregnant women uh, and also the mothers mm -hmm. that are still yeah. breastfeeding <laughs> oh. Egendal has brought me to see the local health clinic it's doing its best to provide for the needs of locals here in the east, as well as the influx of refugees from Dili. This young woman's first child died, and she's now pregnant with her second. She, does she understand about children? About children, yeah. Does she understand what she has to do? Yeah. Every month? Yeah, every, month. every month to the health clinic to, to, to weigh, to measure the, the child. The World Food Programme says the current crisis is making a critical situation even worse. 
if anything should happen, if there is some sort of generalized violence or any kind of shock, these people can very well, very quickly get into a situation where the acute malnutrition raises to a level where their kids, for sure, are uh, at risk of, of dying or, or getting diseases. This woman is one of 300 Cuban doctors brought into East Timor by former Prime Minister Mari Alcatiri. She says she was shocked to see the level of poverty here. She's found the Timorese have been through so much, yet expect so little. On the way back to the capital, we find more displaced people. Instead of fleeing to a refugee camp, these people moved onto their family's land. Ten people sleep in here. Ten people sleep in this, this house. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. And uh, what, uh, the, the house was burned? Yes. Yeah. In my hunger. Just broken. Okay, just broken. Yeah. And just imagine if they're, if they're here when the rainy season starts. Uh, Back at Dili's airport, the refugees are also worried about the rainy season, now just a few weeks away. Five months after the violence started, three months after a new prime minister was installed, and despite the presence of international peacekeepers, the outlook is still grim for these families. It has left many in despair about East Timor's leaders. Sudah <laughs> <laughs>